I'm very happy to be here. It's my second PDF, the first one in Gdańsk. I'm very happy to be here. Um, as introduced, um, I'm uh, a former journalist. I was working as a journalist for 16 years and I still do documentary movies. I was mainly working on televisions. Um, since 2013, I've also been teaching journalists uh, digital skills, but also typical journalist skills. My first trainings took place in Ukraine, actually in Crimea uh, in 2013. And since then, I've been teaching quite a lot recently, mainly with Google News Lab. Um, the media landscape is changing all the time. Like the media that we used to know is totally different nowadays. Actually, the media that I started working in was very different from what it is today. I always laughed that I was working with those huge Betacom tapes, and nowadays you can work with just a mobile phone. So the way we research, the way we search for news, the way we uh, check the stories, the way we produce them, the way we um, distribute them is changing rapidly. Um, the internet brought us lots of different possibilities and brought us closer to the audience. And actually, uh, internet and the, uh, the so-called 2.0 brought a lot of to the audience as well. The people, they also, their voices can be heard better nowadays. Um, the people got the tools that allow them to cover stories, to show stories. If it's not the internet, if it's not the mobile devices, if it's not social media, we would have learned a lot later about what was going on in, uh, uh, during the Arab Spring or the events in Ukraine. So I always say that we live in this age of plenty. The age of plenty because we have plenty of tools, we have access to various information, uh, we have more and more data that we can work with, uh, we have better uh, equipment that we can work with. But something is not working out. Um, and I'm saying that not just like a media training specialist that works with journalists from all around Central and Eastern Europe, and I always laugh that I'm like a priest that listens to lots of confessions because everyone is telling me what's not working. But this is also like a self-confession. As I was saying, my ma majority of my professional life is being a journalist. So what's not working is that we're losing something, and what we're losing as media is trust. Um, and you can define it whatever, but uh, one thing is obvious, and it's just not like my opinion or your opinion, it's data. So here you can see what is the trust level to various um, uh, news, uh, or how people trust uh, news around the world. Finland has the highest percentage of people trusting the news, and then it goes lower and lower. The data is from 2016. Probably if you look at Central and Eastern European countries, it is a bit lower nowadays. Uh, I'm focusing on Reuters digital a news report because I think this data is the best. See Greece, 20%. This is some of the data from Poland from 2016, how we trust different media outlets. And actually, on the news website in recent years was the only media uh, that was uh, growing trust instead of losing it. Interesting thing, we uh, trust more news brands than we trust the journalists. It's interesting and it's extremely sad. So this is how we trust journalists in Central European countries. Poland, 42. Czechia, 20%. Hungary, 20%. This data also comes from Reuters Digital News Report. What's even more, ter more ter terrifying, if you look at social media, people trust more who shares the story, not uh, what kind of media outlet shares the story. Um, therefore, all the trust in fake news. Um, so, Talking of trust, uh, the most important thing is to realize there is a problem. And more and more media outlets, or rather journalists, are re realizing there is one. The thing, like, if we look for reasons why we're losing trust, is what we could say just people don't believe anything, people believe nothing. And Reuters Digital Report found a couple of reasons. So, indeed, loss in faith in an institution in general. But it's too little to say. It doesn't give us the broad picture. So it's also perception of political influence, especially in such countries as Turkey or Hungary. Business and commercial influence, again, Turkey, Hungary, Czech Republic. And also yesterday's news and clickbites. 
we don't see the media following the stories we want them to follow, and uh, they're fighting for something different that is import uh, important for the audience. And this is, if I was to say, uh, self-confession. It's just we stopped thinking about the audience, and we stopped thinking th about the people enough. The re reasons might be even, even more, but those are the basic ones. Um, Here's something also that is very important. I, as a journalist and my colleagues, we also stopped believing in this profession and in what we can do as journalists. Um, we're losing that faith. I would not say that everyone, but many of us are. Uh, those are screenshots from Twitter from Poland, and you can see here journalists, politicians, uh, key opinion leaders, and what they're all saying is they're sharing uh, respected media outlets, stories from respected media outlets, and what they're all saying is starting their tweets with, if this is true. So you can imagine people sharing stories from respected mainstream known media, but still doubting if the stories they share are true. Um, so this is like an average person. Um, if we want to be a dot watchdog, we can't even start from being a watchdog. We actually need to start from the basic. We need to start rebuilding trust and making people believe us. So what do we need in trust? Maybe objectivity, that's what we lost, but actually we need to redefine them. What's still considered objective? If you go to a war zone, can you be objective? If you go to Syria, cover what's going on, if you cover terrorist events, can you still be 100% objective? Also, what's important is accuracy in reporting. It's plurality of opinions. Bring everyone to speak. Be, bring different political views. Bring minorities. Bring those excluded and make their voices heard. It's accountability. If you want to make people, governments, businesses accountable, you need to feel accountable yourself. Then integrity of the opinions of the newsroom and journalists. Tonality. You don't need to say a bloody uh, civil war. Civil war is always bloody, just like every war and proactivity, which I will talk about later. What we need is greater transparency in business models, in the way uh, journalists work, in the workflow. As said, redefining objectivity, new codes of practice. It's 2.0, and we're still, when it comes to new codes of practice, we're still with practices like the beginning of 20th century, 21st century. We need technology solutions. Technology can be of help. So let's become partners with technology companies, but still with transparency. We need greater emphasis on education and media literacy if we want to fight fake news and if we want to fight it correctly. And we need greater user engagement or the audience engagement. Um, on editorial level, any evidence new led news gathering, that's important. Diversity of opinion, as I was saying, and the transparency and about methods and values that the newsroom and journalists share. Um, in 2001, Bill Kovic and Tom Rosenthal uh, from a Center for Investigative Journalists wrote a couple of new code of practices, a couple of words. And it's so also obvious, but actually we tend to forget. So to be a good journalist and to be a great watchdog, you need to remember about those. I think the three first ones are most important. Journalists' first obligation is to the truth, its first loyalty is to citizens, and its essence is a discipline of verification. This verification thing is so much connected to trust. Um, why we need to do that and why we need to rebuild that trust to be a watchdog again is because otherwise we will lose it all. I'll go back to that first quote I started with uh, from Peggy Noonan, who, uh, a writer, an American writer and journalist, who said that actually when people believe nothing, they will be believe anything. And this is all that story that we tend to talk about is like uh, both mistrust in media, fake news, wrongly described stories, don't wrongly described photos. We all can fight with that and we need to start with that. Otherwise, we will have stories like this. This is like a case study I just wanted to show you. Uh, this is a simple but fake photo shared on Twitter. Uh, if we don't um, verify it, it will spread and give us wrong opinion of, um, uh, of conflict in Syria. So this was a photo shirt um, from Syria and it was from a video. Then what happens next? There are fake news that are trying to tell us that st photos from Syria are fake. And this is a photo that connected uh, 
a visual makeup artist with a real photo of a child that was dead in Yemen, but it was saying that that's how you create fake news from Syria. And in the end, you have politicians that take fake photos and bring them to, dis uh, to discuss situation in Syria. This is a Syrian ambassador in front of the United Nations talking about how Syrian army is helping the citizen. Uh, the citizens of Aleppo. But the truth is that the photo is from um, uh, Iraq and from Fallujah. So if we don't start from the beginning, if we don't help people, don't teach people how to verify, if we don't work with the people, and if we don't uh, hold ourselves accountable and governments accountable, then the mistrust will be growing bigger and bigger. Um, just to end up, journalism as a critical watchdog in the end helps create trust in political uh, systems. I'm saying trust in political systems because uh, if you uh, watch the media, if you watch the politicians, in the end you watch the political systems. And just, I'm over the time, so just to end up, um, one more key thing as well. I was showing different slides from this um, uh, series, the newsrooms. I don't know how many of you know the, the series. Most of you don't. So this was like many media and journalists, their approach. They just take for granted that people know. So I just took for granted that you all know the newsrooms. Um, and the truth is that you always need to pay attention what the people know, what they want to know, uh, what is their main focus. So just don't think like in the journalistic way, think of people's way. And this is the only way that will lead you to trust. Thank you. <laughs>